Hi, I'm Josh. Thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. Uh, this talk, in a more abstract sense than being about Composer, as it says on the sign, is about writing better, more manageable code. Uh, it's about writing more reusable code, which equals better code. And it's about uh, writing, uh, it's about writing uh, code that's more decoupled, and therefore leads to better reusability, leads to better code. And it's about reusing your code better, right? We have GPL, we're all writing GPL code, so let's reuse our code between client sites, between our own projects, between other things that we find. Let's make it very easy for us to reuse what we're doing, so that way when we work on one project and we make an improvement, we can instantly have that improvement for everything that we do. And therefore, we're writing better code, we're better developers. Uh, that's what this is about in the abstract, uh, and that can apply to most package managers, dependency systems. Uh, today we're talking about Composer, the PHP dependency uh, manager. Before I go any further, I do want to say this talk is not about WordPress core or what WordPress core should do. Uh, I personally don't think Composer has any uh, place in WordPress core, um, and that's also just the reality. But we're talking about making plugins, making themes, making sites for people using WordPress. That's what we're talking about. So, uh, and that also means that we don't have to entirely follow uh, how things work in core uh, in a sensible fashion. So. I do a lot of WordPress things, um, and I have a company called Arid of P. We do WordPress plugins. Um, I'm working on a SaaS service uh, powered by WordPress. Um, I have a site. I write for a lot of people, and I also work for Pods, the free content develop, uh, development system. So we let you do uh, con custom content types, custom fields very easily. Uh, I do lots of things, and this is important because uh, I'm probably working on 30 or 40 plugins right now, and I'm sharing a hell of a lot of code between them. And I'm in the process of as much as possible moving this into Composer so I can more efficiently share between. So this is a topic that is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, so what is Composer? Composer is the PHP dependency management system. GetComposer.org. Um, I'm not going to walk you through installing Composer. It's going to be slightly different by uh, depending on your operating system. And uh, I've never done it on Windows, but really, uh, at least for Unix-like operating systems, it's going to take you about three minutes and it's going to take two commands. It's very easy. Read their docs. They're great. Um, but what is dependency management that you speak of? Um, AKA a package manager. I'm going to use these terms in, in interchangeably today. Uh, a package manager, a dependency system, it automates installing your code, updating your code, removing your code, right? I no longer need this dependency this package, or I want to deploy code. Because your composer is probably going to be part of your Git repo for your site, for your plugin, for your theme, which means that it can exist in your local site. It can exist on your development site. It can exist on your staging site, on your live site together. And so these things can be used as part of an automated deployment process. Um, so why do we care? Um, why is any of this important to you as a developer, uh, as a plugin developer, as a theme developer, as somebody who's making WordPress sites for people or for yourself? Um, one big reason is staying dry. Dry is the do not repeat yourself principle. This is a myth sacred principle that we must all abide by. Um, I love WordPress. Um, I feel like there are some things in WordPress that um, are anti the dry principle um, that are amongst our practices that we can do better on. Um, and using systems like uh, Composer can help challenge us uh, to be more dry and do better and write uh, better code. Um, so the idea here is write code once and reuse it right. Or just don't re write code. Use somebody else's code, right? We can do better work if we just use somebody who's better than us. <laughs> right? we, like, why should we be in an open source ecosystem if we don't take advantage of it? Like, if there's some better way of doing something besides writing all this code again, why the hell wouldn't we? Um, and also, no new copy pasta. Um, who here has like a really good, uh, um, has a really good bit of code that they've cut and pasted from one project to another and like renamed the class name? <laughs> yeah, all day. Um, I am trying as hard as I can to eradicate this copy pasta process from my life because it works really well, right? You copy from one site to another. And you do a find and replace to like change this class prefix or whatever uh, is there. And then now you're good. And then you use it. And then you find what's wrong with it. 
right? Because it's code. There's always something wrong. <laughs> and right, this is just an assumption that we should work with. Um, and so you change it. And then you realize that like this is cut and pasted from another project. So then you have to like cut and paste it back to that other project. And hopefully you like A do that, and B, uh, you don't make a mistake in that, right? Because now your line numbers aren't exact, and also you've made some changes, like you have divergence that's happened from the find and replace. Um, and what you're doing now is you're violating the um, separation of, uh, of concerns between humans and computers. Computers are really good at doing things predictably over and over again, uh, which is something that humans are bad at. And humans are really good at being creative and coming up with new and interesting things, and that's something that computers are bad at. So when we get away from copy pasta, uh, we, can, we can fix that division of labor. We can let computers handle moving seven copies and keeping them in sync between seven projects, and we can focus on being creative. And that's what makes us good developers is when we're creative and when we let the technology do its thing, get out of our way. I'm big on automation. I'm going to <coughs> resist the urge to talk about like grunt all the things in here because um, it's not on the topic. Uh, but I'll be at the happiness bar most of today and tomorrow. So. Uh, so yeah, reuse your code, right? Update it once and have it update everywhere. Let's be smart about our reuse. That's really what this is, is that um, computers when used right can enhance our intelligence. Uh, and that applies to both programming and you know, Google storing all of our information that we can't remember. So let's, uh, let's, let's, let, let's let computers help us be better at this. Um, other dependency management systems. PHP is the com P ah, Composer is the PHP dependency management system. There are plenty of them out there that you might know and use. Uh, the Node Package Manager, very helpful uh, one um, for Node, JavaScript. Um, and also gets you into things like Bower and Gulp, these things um, which are very useful, especially for front endy stuff. Um, Pair, probably not incredibly useful for most of us. Um, apt get, and there are a bunch of similar ones. Apt get is the package manager for several flavors of Linux, um, and other flavors of Linux have a similar system, so that's more of a generic term. Git modules, some modules are sort of a dependency management system, but um, they, they suck, so whatever. But it, they, they can work in this way. Um, and let's not forget the WordPress plugin and theme admin system. That's a dependency management system. And in a lot of cases, it's good enough. Let's not forget that that's an option and that we don't always need to go down this route. Uh, but also it helps you conceptualize what a dependency management system does. It lets you say, on this site, I have these nine plugins. It says, I'm going to update this plugin now. I'm going to remove this plugin. I'm going to add a tenth plugin. Uh, so, and same with themes. It helps you manage all these independent packages that aren't part of WordPress. <coughs> so you, even if you've never used Composer, you've never used NPM, you've never used Gulp, you've never used Bower, Everybody here uses WordPress, so you've all used a dependency management system. Uh, it's limited. It's not going to solve all your problems, but you've done it. So uses for Composer in WordPress. Improving deployments. You can use Composer to build your entire site. Uh, and we'll get into all of these in more detail. Plugin, theme, and site development. Share common code between plugins and themes. And use your code and other people's codes uh, in, different, in your projects, in across projects. These are our general categories that I'm talking about, uh, and I'll go into each of these in detail. Uh, before we go too far, though, version control systems, uh, VCS for short, or Git for short, um, versus dependency management. Because you're all, if you're new to this, um, there, there are no other dependency management, or the version control systems that make sense, so we can just call it Git. Um, the, um, this is a question that's going to come up, and it's a, this, is a, this is a healthy question. Why can't I just use a Git repo? Uh, you, you, you're going to. But we're going to talk about your Git repo for a project. And project could be a site, could be a plugin, could be a theme versus what's going in Composer. Because you should use both, right? I'm by no means saying you're not going to use Git, because that would be insane. Uh, it's a terrifying world that keeps us up at night. Uh, <laughs> so when do you use a v, what, what do you use a VCS system for, or a version control system? Um, is it your code, and is it unique to this project? So those are two things, right? If it's not my, my code, right, I'm using easy digital downloads on a lot of things right now. I'm not version controlling easy digital downloads. It's not my problem. That's their problem. Let them deal with it. So that is why I use dependency management, is to pull in easy digital downloads, and easy digital software licensing, these sorts of things. Um, and is it unique to this project? 
Um, I, I dog food a lot. I'm a huge believer in it. So a lot of times I have a site where half of the plugins are my plugins. Still, they don't belong to this project. Therefore, they, don't, they get managed by a composer. Um, but if it's unique, your configuration files, your structure sometimes, your index.php for your site, um, these sorts of things, your WP config, uh, that goes right into your Git repo. Oftentimes, I put the child theme that I'm using for a site in the Git repo for that site. Um, and that's pretty much the only thing that I'm ever committing on unless I need to make a change to WP config or what's included to WP config. Um, everything that isn't unique. Um, everything's not unique to this project. It could be reused. Uh, the user dependency management. So this is basically all the things. It's not all the things, but it's basically all the things. And that's the unique, the distinction is uniqueness to what I'm doing in this project. Even if I'm writing it for this project, it might not qualify as unique to this project because I'm probably going to reuse it. Um, and don't forget, Composer checks packages out as um, a version control repo. So it's managing the process of checking things out from GitHub for you if, you're, if your package is coming, from, it is coming from a version control repo, which is almost all the time. So if you make a change, right, you're dogfooding, you're using the plugin that you developed for a site, you're using a library that you've developed for your plugin, and you make a change to that in the context of that site, right? This was the whole point is that we can reuse all of this stuff. Go into that repo, git commit, you know, git add, git commit, git push. You've now updated that repo. Every one of those packages is, a git, is, is git, and you therefore can make changes, commit them, and now they're back up on the internet, and you can pull them down into your other projects. Uh, so composer.json, this is how the composer repo a composer project is configured, is in this file. Um, important part is .json. This is a JSON file. It must observe the JSON syntax. If you're a PHP developer, this is going to annoy you because like, you can't put a comma at the end of a, um, of a key in an array. Uh, I, I will uh, give a prize to anybody who finds the errors in my uh, examples here. But also, it makes cut it, making it, pulling <coughs> examples out into uh, articles and presentations terrible because if you want them valid JSON, um, you have to do things like this, but if you just copy this block in to something that's existing, the fact that there's not a comma here is now creating invalid JSON uh, because the next thing needs a comma, but I don't know. So in its own, I don't put a comma. Uh, this is why you should be using an IDE that has syntax highlighting, uh, in my opinion, PHP storm, but uh, why not? Also, a lot of my examples that I'm doing, they are pulled from, they're all pulled from re the real world, and those are GitHub links. Um, so I'm going to walk you through an example, uh, composer.json for a WordPress plugin. Um, this is a pods plugin, I work for pods, um, that I had nothing to do with. Um, uh, but this is the uh, meta info, this is at the beginning. This is telling us what's the name of the package and that's vendor slash the package name. Give it a description. This is generally the same as your plugin or theme description. Uh, what type? This is the most important piece in this entire thing. Composer by default treats types, all packages, as a library. If you're making a WordPress plugin or a WordPress theme, it's aware that that's a thing, but you have to tell it that this is a type WordPress bug. This can become very important later when we talk about site development but you always want to make sure you say WordPress plugin or WordPress theme if it's a WordPress plugin or a WordPress theme. Because Composer can customize where things go. We'll talk about where things go, and by default, they do not go where you want a WordPress plugin to go. Uh, keywords, useful, depends on really what you're doing. If it's going to be listed on packages, this is really helpful. Homepage, right? License, you know, drop in GPL there. Um, authors, and this gets clipped off, as I said, that, that link, if you want to see the whole thing. Um, just a list of authors, who it is, um, so people can see it. Uh, I actually chose this one. I don't know if Naomi's here today, but she's a, you know, a, an Atlanta person, and she's contributed to this plugin on pod, so uh, it made sense to pull one that she contributed to. And it's good because it allows you to acknowledge everybody. Right? We always start with pod's framework team, and then we list who are the main contributors there. And you'll see on this one, not including me. Um, and then you can also have a section for links. Uh, 
that's really great for support. Where do issues go? And where's my source code? Uh, these are important because if it's listed on Packagist, it'll automatically pull these and make them links on Packagist. And also just so people looking at your code know where to go to complain to you. Um, requirements. This is the world's most basic requirements list. But remember, and we're going to get more into this, requirements are what are the dependencies of the system? What is it that I need to install? So we're going to say, uh, in this case, composer installers. That's sort of going to happen all the time. And then a PHP version. Um, and PHP won't be installed because it's going to, in most configurations that we're in the world of, this is more for reference. But notice that this has a greater than or equal to. With all of these, we can say greater than or equal to, greater than these sorts of things, comparisons for version numbers. Um, Composer does require 5.3 uh, to actually function, but depending on how you're delivering, and we'll get into this, you can use it if you observe the backwards compatibility of WordPress. We'll get into more of that issue. Um, I've been talking about packages. Um, a package, right, a Composer package can be hosted in on, pack on a Packages server. Packages.org is a repository of packages that you can automatically pull from of PHP uh, packages. Wpackages.org, huh? WP Packages, um, is a mirror of the WordPress plugin and WordPress theme repositories on WordPress.org. So every single plugin that's on WordPress.org has a package automatically generated on Wpackages.org. This is very useful. We'll look at this in a minute. Um, but you can also just use any um, Git, SVN, or whatever type of uh, VCS repo you're using. So that's really helpful for, like, say, your custom code. And as long as the server that's running it has access to it, so you have um, a public repo, or you have a um, repo that uh, your server has the SSH key for, um, if it's private on GitHub or Bitbucket, you can pull from there. Uh, and that's fairly seamless. Like, if you go into your GitHub settings and you uh, add an SSH key for your server, it'll work. The requirements. I'm going to take you through a bunch of different examples here. This requirement section. This is really the money. The author stuff, the meta stuff, not as important. That type, very important. The rest of it, it's very good stuff to have. Um, but like a plugin header in WordPress, you don't need to list the author. You don't need to list the license, but you should. Um, so let's look at a couple of different types of uh, packages here. The first one here um, is coming from Packagist. We can see that because it just has somebody's, um, in this case, John P. Block, who works for 10up, um, a package. And this package is called WordPress, because by the way, you can manage WordPress through, uh, through a variety of strategies. This is my preferred strategy. It's really well configured. I'll show you a little bit more about how this works. But I'm saying in this package, give me WordPress 4.1. Uh, a plugin from the repo is the next example. WP packages plugin pods. Uh, and then you'll see for version, I'm just going to select star. So that's the latest version. And for WP packages, that's equivalent to pulling from trunk. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, pulling stable. Uh, whatever the stable tag is set in SVN. Um, and then this next one, this is a example of a package, this is one that we wrote at my company, so we could use the EDD licensing, um, both like the UI for it, so you can like click in and enter your license, and also like the updater class from EDD that they tell you to put into all your plugins. Instead of cutting and pasting it into all of them, we just add this one line and it pulls from packages. And now we have our UI rigged up and we have the actual class for running the updater that, you know, that makes the API call to check that with the license and activates it. So the missing quote is not where, which one? The end of oh, yep, that is an accident. I apologize. Always uh, quotes at the end. You win something. Yeah. You promised them. Okay. Yes, you win something. Oh, really? Come find me afterwards. I will give you a prize. Totally legit. <laughs> what? A new car. It's a He's not Oprah. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you a free plug in. Okay. How about that? Um, I will, totally. Come and pick out, uh, pick out a plugin from our site. I'll give you 100% co uh, code. Um, so the problem with uh, Google Drive for slides is that they don't have a syntax highlighter, right? And so <laughs> I get totally dependent on uh, PHP Storm to like, tell me what I'm wrong, which is fine. This is the division of labor between humans and computers. 
Uh, I'm not perfect at, at uh, my JSON syntax, but uh, PHP Storm will fix it for me. Also, like the composer errors when you miss that, right? Like that's going to throw an error. Um, <laughs> making a, um, oh, this one was wrong until about 20 minutes before my talk, by the way. So I fixed it. Um, in, in this, by the way, where clipping off the I, I kind of fixed that uh, in uh, there. Like it's good. This one I know is wrong, but it looks good here. So, um, <laughs> oh, or at least on Google Drive. Um, so, what if you have a plugin that's on GitHub that hasn't been released? In this case, this is the Pods JSON API uh, plugin. It's still in beta. We haven't pushed it out yet. Uh, we need to rewrite it now that the core REST API has gone to 1.2. Um, and if you want to use it in a plugin, you have to make it known to your composer.json because it's not on packages. It's not on W packages. So we have a repository section, and we say, what type is it? It's git. And then we say, where is it? What's its URL? github.com slash whatever. And now we can use it in our requirement section just like any other. It, for this to work, the git repo has to have a valid composer.json in it. Uh, you should anyway. So that was a little tour. Let's try and put this all together with three examples that are actually going to match up with the three examples that we started with before. Full site development. We're making WordPress sites. Um, this is my WordPress VVV start. Um, this is what I used before I automated the creation of it with Grunt. There's a link to that, too. Um, but it just makes this. Um, and my philosophy is that your Git repo tracks your theme or your child theme that's unique to this site. Um, it tracks your WP config. Uh, though I, I, have like, I segment WP config out, so that way I have one file that's just uh, my da database passwords and stuff, and then I can just git ignore that. So that way everything that I can actually have my um, entire repo on GitHub and not worry about it. There's nothing proprietary there. Um, as far as like, I have like a premium plugin. Well, it doesn't matter because it's coming in via GitHub from a you know, private Git or Bitbucket uh, for there. So I'm not like giving away somebody's copy of say WP Migrate DB Pro, something I always use. Uh, I just maintain my own uh, private repo of it. So that way I can get it by dependency management and I'm not being that jerk that's giving it away for free. Um, but my entire WP config can be there because it's got everything in it besides the database details, right? That's something that we can't make public. And so uh, that's get ignored. I just drag it up with FTP. I only have to do it once. Who cares, right? Um, but like my, if you look at here, the local database config, which is to work with VVV, it's in there, right? Um, you guys want to know the database password is WP on all my VVV. Who cares, right? Um, and then move plugins. Uh, this is going to depend on how you use must-use plugins. In general, for me, if I'm using a must-use plugin, it, it's unique to the site. It's like add another, um, in this case, the only one I think it's using is adding a new theme directory. Because I git ignore WP, I, and my, well, let's not say WP content, because I would never call it that. Um, uh, my content directory, slash plugins, and slash themes, and slash uploads. But I do want my child theme to be included in my git repo. So I just register another theme repo, because you another theme directory, because you can do that with two lines of code in a move plug. So that's unique to the site. That goes in the Git repo. Uh, more full site examples. Um, bedrock. Uh, Julian, raise your hand. Uh, you guys know the Roots theme? The Snail Sage? He's on that team. They make this awesome system called Bedrock that uh, uses Composer for dependency management, uses Ansible. Uh, it's super sweet. Um, it was a big inspiration for me, but though I must admit I don't use it. I can't help you very much with it either. It's too smart. Okay. Well, he can connect you with the people who will. I can connect you with the people. Who but will. if you need, like, this works with Capistrano for deployment. Um, it is like the full nine, uh, and it's a very complete system that's very similar. Uh, it's in fact, I would say my system is like scaled down from there. And we use Composer all day. Yeah. So. They do good stuff. Like, check out Sage how they use it. Um, also, as I said, I have a grunt uh, init template that can generate uh, a unique uh, VVV for VVV and appointments um, site using that same example that I was showing there. So example two, I call this a very WordPress composer package. Um, and this is actually by Mark Jaquith. Um, as you don't know, as a lead developer of WordPress. Um, and he has this awesome uh, soft expiring trash, uh, soft expiring transient cache library. Uh, basically, it uses WordPress transients 
but it's soft expiring. So if you hit it while it's out of date, it'll serve you the out of date while rebuilding. So that way your next one. So the philosophy being that your, um, your performance is more important than data being perfect, which works in certain situations and doesn't work in others. Uh, it's on GitHub. And um, I'm going to jump out into the GitHub in a second. But there's um, Rarst, uh, Audrey, has an um, awesome uh, case study on this, as well as just in general do, um, information on, um, on using uh, at composer.rs.net on using Composer with WordPress, and also another cool caching system that you can use. Um, if I switch over to here, this is the um, this is the entire Composer file uh, for this. So this, and I have this linked in there, but I would encourage you to check this out because the way that this works is PHP 5.2 compatible is the most WordPress-y example I can find. And also, it's like a really cool um, uh, package that you can use. And like I wrote a caching plugin for the uh, REST API uh, that has almost no code in it, because I'm just using this for my actual caching. Um, and we're going to get back to this part here. So keep that in mind if you open that one up. OK. Another example, creating a plugin out of Composer libraries. Right? This is, to me, the end game, is that your plugin does almost nothing. It's all in Composer libraries. Uh, this is one that we built that's um, on WordPress.org. Um, in, by the way, that helps answer your question about, like, well, how do I have right, a, you download from GitHub, and now it doesn't have all the things and I encourage people to, in my readme, to do a Composer update when they download? That's not going to track for all users. Well, that's where WordPress.org becomes your best friend, is that you can make a build. I grunt automate it, but you can do it manually. Zip it up, send it to WordPress.org, or put it, in a, you know, put it on a file on your server. So you can still have a pre-built, uploaded to WordPress, and it works plugin. has all of your dependencies included, and it, um, uh, and it still has the ability, really, with this, our goal with this was to, it's a templating system, where we are uh, using a templating engine that's the PHP port of Handlebars. Right? Handlebars.js is very popular, very nice JavaScript uh, templating system. Um, we're, able to, um, we're able to load, use that, so we don't have to write that, handlebars.php. Somebody else already wrote it. And we basically just give you a WordPress admin interface for this templating plugin. If it now, we're able to use, I've done it on a couple of client sites with some up, up, upcoming plugins, where we're not going to take the admin. We're just going to use our classes that allow you to render it and you hook up a new admin to it. But all of the logic of, like, let's hook this up to the content, let's hook it up to a shortcode, let's hook it up to a function, uh, all that stuff, we can just pull right in just with one line from Composer. Um, back up one second here. I wanted to show you, before we go too much further, on the importance when we talk about types. Remember I said if it's a WordPress plugin, you have to set type equals WordPress plugin? This is why it's important. WordPress installed there. This is very specific to John P. Block's WordPress thing. Uh, installer by a composer, that it looks for WordPress installed there. So we can say, where does it go? In this case, public dot underscore HTML slash WP. Wherever you want WordPress to go, put it there. Re relevant. And this is, a re this is relative to wherever composer.json sits. Um, so public dot HTML is a subfolder of this directory, slash WP. That's where I want it. Um, and then installer paths. This is working with composer installer. Composer's installer knows about a type called WordPress plugin and it, a type called WordPress uh, theme. If we don't do this, our WordPress plugins and our WordPress themes are going to end up in a vendor directory in the root of our, uh, uh, of our, of our package, and therefore WordPress doesn't know about them. So um, instead, we say installer paths. For type WordPress plugin, it's a little backwards how it reads, we want them to go in. Uh, you can think of that as WP content, but I don't like to call it WP content because then I can't search for it. I like to. Yeah, in my case, site will get replaced with a slug for the site, so that way I can search from the finder for my content directory. Um, slash plugins, 
and then just use the variable name, sort of the package name, that's what the folder's gonna be, and then put it in WordPress plugin. It's a WordPress plugin, it goes in the plugins folder, right? We all know this. And if it's a theme, same thing, site content, themes. Put it in WordPress theme. Um, and so if you look at the um, requirements here, WordPress at the top, it's gonna go into WordPress goes. Most of these are plugins until the last two lines. They're gonna go where plugins go because those all have the type WordPress plugin, either because that's in their package or almost all of these are coming from WP packages, so by smart enough to do that. And then at the bottom here, you see these two are WordPress themes. Word, w packages to us 2015, um, and then this uh, Fukusawa theme, which I use on my site, um, that I like a lot. Um, and so those we've mapped at this bottom here that they go in the themes directory, right? So we're just kind of teaching Composer what is the structure of my site? Where do I put a theme? Where do I put a plugin? The Composer autoloader. In your, um, you're getting a crash course in Composer. You're gonna have to ask you all to go in and read the docs. They're fairly simple to figure out. Installing, updating, Composer update, these sorts of things. But very important, this is one of the things that's great about Composer, is that it gives you an autoloader. Uh, there are three ways to use it, probably more. There are three rel uh, things that apply here. Uh, PSR4, in my opinion, how you should be doing it. Uh, to, who here was for Tom's talk today on WordPress standards? I think he's really right, um, but sometimes you've gotta bend the rules because they uh, make you, allow you to do, work better. And it's great if you could bend the rules into somebody into an established uh, standard. So PSR4 is a standard for naming and structuring your plugins, so that way it can work with a standard autoloader, your, your package. Uh, and it's not the WordPress way, but at least it's a way, right? So we're using the established PHP community's way of doing things. Because I think that if for plugin development and sometimes for themes, this is a better way of working, uh, you know? It, at least it's an established standard. There, it can also support PSR0. I don't really see the point there. This is the older system. Uh, PSR0 will work without a namespace, so um, therefore, if you're concerned about PHP 5.2, I'm not. Honestly, I'm just not. All of my plugins start with a, a, a function that'll throw an error. If you're on PHP 5.2, you like throw an admin error, so that way it doesn't throw a fatal error. And then if not, include a file that actually loads the plugin and is not PHP 5.2 compatible. Why anybody would want to run on PHP before 5.4 doesn't make any sense to me, and I'm done catering to them. If you want to, there's a class map. You can manually um, list out every class by path, and it'll auto-load it for you, um, and we'll go through that. PSR4 autoloader is very easy to use. It's the best way as long as you're not stuck with PHP 5.2, which um, I realize many of us are. We add an auto-load section here, and we say, what is my namespace? Uh, and we end with a slash, but we have to escape that slash. So it's two slashes. And then, right, so this is going to use the uh, director, the namespace hat. And then what is the root directory? Uh, in PSR4, your root namespace doesn't have to be in a directory called what your namespace is. So we can just say in source. That's normally how it works. Um, and so now it'll auto load from there. And then it'll pick up all your sub namespaces from there. So if you have hat slash settings, and that's in a subdirectory hats source slash settings, it'll automatically autoload those. Uh, you can do PSR0 without a namespace. Um, I'm not really sure why. Um, you can also use the class map. There are two really good uses for class map and file map. Uh, class map, because, and this by the way is copied from uh, TLC transients. Uh, this is how Mark Jacob did it. And this is very useful because this is PHP 5.2 compatible. Uh, you just, and it's not, right, it's two classes in the entire plug, and it's not the end of the world to have to write these. Uh, and it's slightly less bad than doing like require the name of your class uh, in the path. What's really actually really useful about this is the file map. There, that way, I have uh, like a functions.php in all my plugins for functions that aren't in a class. So I use the file map to include a functions.php. Uh, questions? Do I use Gulp? 
I have used Gulp, um, but I don't. Um, I'm a big Grunt fan, and I know that makes me uncool. But, 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 um, there is a danger in the new Shiny. I learned Grunt, and then I found out that I would be much cooler if I used Gulp. And the thing is, is that I spent a lot of time learning how to use Grunt, and Grunt does everything that I need in that world. If it works. Yeah, I agree. And I think in this kind of topic, when you're talking about a system that could, that's like, I think that there are people who can approach the question of a uh, composer or grunt or NPM with the, with the philosophy of this is the right way to do it and every other way is wrong, right? We're PHP developers, so therefore we have to use gr uh, composer. If you're sitting here and going, this has no actual benefit to me, Josh, thanks for your talk, but I don't get, you know, I don't, don't, not going to help me with what I do, then don't use it just because it's the right way of doing things. If this is something that's actually going to benefit you, if everything that I've laid out here, uh, any, any part of it has an actual tangible benefit to you, then I hope this was a really good introduction to the topic and that you will, you will see this as a start point and you will get into it. If none of this really applies to you, then great, you learn something new, move on with your life. Uh, sh shove it away in your head for later. Um, on my site I have, um, which is joshpress.net, um, there's an article that's linked to this um, that, that has these slides embedded but also it links to a article of the same name that kind of this was based on, and also some articles that I've written for Torque uh, that have a very general introduction to Composer, just in general for WordPress, and then there's one specifically for plugin developers. Um, and I'm Josh at joshpress.net, um, which is a terrible way to get in touch with me. I dream of a world where I don't, never answer email ever again. Um, at Josh412 on Twitter. Uh, seriously, I'm always on Twitter. Um, and uh, if you want to have a real discussion, I'll like tell you to DM me on WordPress uh, Slack or something. Uh, I use Slack and Twitter how I actually communicate with people. Uh, but seriously, thank you for coming. And if you want to discuss this, I'll be in this area over here with the happiness bar. And I'll be on Twitter for the rest of my life. Um, <laughs> so unless there are any other questions, you all are awesome. <laughs>